What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, this week we are covering possibly one of the simplest subclasses in all of D&D. So, this video might be a little short, but uh, there's not really a whole lot to talk about today. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. We will get into that here in just a second. But before we do, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. We are well on our way to 2,000 subscribers, and I'm really hoping to get there by the end of this year. I think we can get there. We're on track, but I need your help to get there. So please make sure you're subscribed. And of course, once you are, click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded and share the video with your friends. So the Champion Fighter is an interesting one because it gets a bad rap in the community for some reasons and it gets a good rap from the rest of it, which is kind of a weird place to be. The reason why it gets this is because it's super simple. You don't really have a whole lot going on as far as exciting features or anything crazy, but at the same time, it's really user friendly. It's really simple. It's really easy to remember what you've got. And so a lot of people will recommend this to newer players. Is that a great idea? That's up to you, and we may be able to have a little bit more insight after we look at everything today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Starting off at third level, we get improved critical, and we now crit on a roll of a 19 or a 20 whenever we make an attack roll. This is obviously very good. We've gone from a 5% chance to a 10% chance, and no one is going to turn that down, especially with how many attacks you are going to be making as a fighter as you go throughout your career. That's only a good thing. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. I mean, it's pretty fantastic being able to double your crit chance. There's nothing wrong with that. At level 7, we get Remarkable Athlete, and this actually gives us kind of a jack-of-all-trades-ish kind of thing, which is pretty awesome. We talked about that in detail when we talked about the Bard, which is up in the icon above right there. So with this, any kind of Strength, Dex, or Constitution check that we make, we can add half our Proficiency bonus if we don't already have Proficiency. That's pretty cool. And in addition, whenever we make a running long jump, we can add a number of feet equal to our strength modifier to the distance that we can jump. Now, I've talked about how jumping is not that great in D&D, and I think it's kind of a wasted mechanic. Um, and you see that kind of in one D&D, seeing how they've made jump an entire action now, rather than it just being a movement type of option. Uh, so they, they've, they're kind of reworking that because it's not great in the current system, so that's not helpful. This also is, of course, a player's handbook subclass, so a lot of this kind of reads poorly because it's based on the old way of, of the game working. I assume that this will be the subclass that we see whenever they redo the warrior, either this or the Battlemaster, I would imagine. Um, and this one, I would say, will be reworked to be a little bit better in this sense to go along with that jump action. But as far as what we have right now, it's not the worst thing in the world to have this bonus. Definitely strength could come into play, especially when we're talking about things like grappling. Uh, whenever you're making that athletics check, you could definitely give yourself a little bit of a bonus on that and be a better grappler. So that's not a bad option here. Although, since I'm critting on a 19 or 20, grappling probably isn't going to be my main focus because weapon attacks get that bonus, not any kind of unarmed strike. So I don't want to do that. I think that would end up being a little a little strange. Um, so overall, you know, it, it ends up being a little bit less useful than it sounds on paper. And so I'm gonna have to give this a four out of 10. It's not that great. Um, and you're probably not gonna use the long jump feature hardly at all, uh, maybe a couple of times ever. Um, and the other one will just gonna be nice, but it's just gonna be kind of a, it's gonna kind of be a ribbon feature overall, to be honest. At level 10, we get additional fighting style and it's exactly what it sounds like. You get an additional fighting style. So that's cool, right? Fighting styles are really nice. Obviously you could also get them from feats, uh, but this of course saves you a feat slot, which is good. Um, but, I mean, these are features that most creatures get between level 1 and 3, right? And so it's it's weird to be getting something this late uh, on, at level 10 when I could just multi-class and get it way earlier on something else if I wanted it. 
So that's a little unfortunate, but it is nice that it gives you the versatility to, if you wanted to have a melee and a ranged option, you could have the dueling fighting style and the archery fighting style. If you wanted to just boost your AC, defense is right there. Defense is always gonna be a good thing and you're most likely going to be wearing armor. So that's kind of a no brainer as well. Or you could take one of the protector type of things and take protection or interception. There are plenty of options here. And I think that that's really, really useful overall. So I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. Like I said, it's really late to be getting a second fighting style. I would have expected this at level seven and something besides Remarkable Athlete, to be honest. But again, it's player's handbook. What are you gonna do? At level 15, we get Superior Critical. And this allows us to crit on between an 18 and a 20 rather than the 19 that we've been enjoying up to this point. Yes, this is late, but I mean, now we have a 15% chance to crit. That's pretty awesome. And that's of course not counting advantage if we are to create a situation where we have advantage. Uh, that is not counting if you have Elven accuracy going because then your chances are ridiculous at that point. Um, yeah, you're gonna be really good at critting. And that feels really good, right? That, that feels really, really awesome. I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. Having that range of 18 to 20 on your crits is really awesome. And if you can knock something prone or just create some way to have a reliable advantage all the time, yeah, this is gonna be absolutely nuts for you. Finally, level 18, we get Survivor. And this actually gives us a little bit of extra healing even beyond what our second wind was already providing. So with this, we can actually heal ourselves for five plus our constitution modifier, as long as we are under half our maximum hit points, which is pretty awesome, actually. We get this as long as we're not at zero hit points and it's just for free at the start of our turn. Healing is kind of difficult to find, especially you know, just as somebody who's not a spellcaster, you're just getting probably 10 HP back if you've maxed out your constitution. You're getting 10 HP back at the start of each of your turns. I mean, if you're sitting in the back, you take one big hit and then you just hide for a couple of rounds, you're just regenerating health quickly. And that's you saving the spell slots of your friends. That's you making sure that your friends don't have to run over in and put themselves into a dangerous position to try to keep you up. There are plenty of ways that this actually is super helpful. Is it a lot of health? No. And that's kind of why I'm not gonna give it a perfect score because 10 HP at level 18 is not much but it does add up over time when it's a constant heal that cannot be turned off, uh, cannot be blocked, you can't counterspell this, it just happens. So for that reason, it's pretty good. I've gotta give this an eight out of 10. Free healing is never gonna be a bad thing, especially when it means that you can have your friends save their really powerful spell slots to do other things. So what do we think of the champion fighter? You can definitely tell that this came from the player's handbook because it is dead simple. It is one of the easiest to understand, one of the easiest to follow and keep track of, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It being simple is the reason why I see this recommended to a lot of new players. There's not much going on in terms of flavor. You can make this any way you want it. This is a completely blank canvas for you to work with, which I think is a blessing in disguise. At the same time, when it comes to flavor built into the subclass, there is none. There is absolutely none. And that's also a difficult thing because you don't really have a great solid direction of where to go with this because of how it's designed. And so at the same time, is it great for beginners? Because then they don't really have any idea of where to take this character. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot while I was preparing for this episode, and it's really difficult because mechanically it's pretty sound, but at the same time, it also kind of feels like you don't even have a subclass. It feels like it's just kind of built into the fighter class and you're just a fighter and that's it. So this one's really hard to rank. Um, mechanically speaking, I would say that it's an eight. Uh, I think it's good. I don't think it's as good as the Battlemaster because again, you get so much versatility out of stuff like that. But at the same time, it does more than the Purple Dragon Knight, even in its simplicity. So we're sitting somewhere in the middle. I think mechanically it's an eight, but the flavor is dragging it down so hard. 
So I'm gonna have to drag it down at least one spot and give this a seven out of 10. Like I said, it is a completely blank canvas, which means you could be anything you want with this. But at the same time, being able to knock weapons out of somebody's hand with disarming attack, being able to have spells being an Eldritch Knight, being able to do all of these really cool things just is a lot more flavorful in my opinion than just you are slightly more of a fighter than the regular fighter. And, and I find that to be a little bit problematic. I know it's old. I, I know that they're going to rework it in one D&D and it definitely needs to be reworked to be more exciting. But at the same time, I, I feel like there definitely could be more to this in order to make it just a little bit more exciting. So mechanically, it's going to pass our test. And so we are going to be building one later this week, and we're gonna see just how powerful we can make this very simple kit. So of course, if you haven't already, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you later on this week. Until then, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.